So Yugi, hmm. what would you call that device behind us right there? Oh, uh, just the bane of my existence. Well, I can't help but agree. If you're a musician or just a music fan, surely you understand the importance of being able to record your own music. So today we're going to talk about the general structure and signal flow of a typical recording studio. So maybe you're a songwriter and you want to record your own songs. But recording studios are these complicated monsters with a lot of moving parts that all need to work together. There's a lot of potential for things to go wrong. So whether you're a songwriter in a band or a classical musician, learning how a recording studio works can be beneficial to your future career. So first things first, you play or you sing into a microphone which converts sound pressure waves into a voltage signal that can travel down a wire. Check out our previous video on transduction for more on how this works. From there your signal travels along your XLR cable into your preamplifier. The preamp's job is to boost the extremely quiet signal from your microphone up to a level that the mixer can actually work with. Sometimes your preamps will be part of the mixer, sometimes they'll be separate. After being amplified, your signal travels through your mixer or a console. Now, consoles can be particularly scary and overwhelming to look at, but they're actually quite simple once you break it down. Every vertical column of buttons and knobs controls EQ and gain for one channel of audio, but all columns, called channel strips, are exactly the same. Your mixer also has the ability to send tracks to external effects and processors such as reverbs and compressors and receive them back on new channels. These are called auxiliary sends and buses. So if you're somehow watching this video from the 1980s or earlier, first off, congratulations on discovering time travel. Secondly, you're probably recording this on a reel-to-reel -reel tape machine. Otherwise, you'll likely be recording to a digital audio workstation such as Pro Tools or Logic. For this to happen, your audio signal will have to travel through an analog to digital converter or a preamp. This converts your analog signal into something that the computer can read. Then you'll be ready to record and edit in your digital audio workstation. So this should give you a basic overview of how signal travels through and in between audio gear. Later, we'll show you how to isolate and solve problems in a recording studio. 